ஹாய் ஹலோ வணக்கம் அண்ட் வெல்கம் டு லெட்டில்ஸ்லா யூடியூப் சேனல் திஸ் இஸ் மீ ய வசந்த் சண்முகம் டுடே இன் திஸ் வீடியோ வி வில் சி வாட் இஸ் அ வெப் சர்வர் ஹவு டஸ் இட் ஒர்க் அண்ட் வி வில் சி மச் மோர் அபவுட் தி வெப் சர்வர் ஸோ வாட் இஸ் அ வெப் சர்வர் இன் சிம்பிள் டேர்ம்ஸ் A web server is a computer that stores, processes and delivers website files to web browsers. These web servers consist of hardware and software that uses hypertext transfer protocol to respond to web users requests made via the world wide web that is through the browsers that the users use through this process the web servers load and deliver the requested page to the users browser so when it comes to browser we have microsoft edge we have google chrome mozilla firefox so any browsers for this purpose these web servers also use simple mail transfer protocol which we call as smtp and file transfer protocol which we call as ftp to process files for email or storage so what is a web server made of on the hardware side a web server connects to the internet which enables it to exchange data or files between other devices that are likewise connected this data comes in different forms such as html files images javascript files or css style sheets web server hardware also stores web server software and these web server software controls how web users access hosted files it consists of several components at least a http server so what is a http server a http server is software can understand http requests and urls these web servers follow the client server model in this structure one program which is known as the client request a resource or service from another program which is from the server so the client requests the resource from the server to process the web client's request web server follow a few steps so here we will see that through an example so as a user if you want to watch a video in our little sla youtube channel say for example so you open your browser and type www.youtube.com to load the website's content and then once you click enter the web browser that you use requests access through the internet and this is called request or a http request the web browser that you use will now look for the youtube website ip address and by translating the url of the web pages via the dns which we call as domain name system or by searching through your cache through its cache and this process locates your nearest web server where the site files are hosted and as the second step the youtube web server receives 
your HTTP request and process it through its HTTP server. Once its HTTP server accepts the request, it will search for our Little Sla YouTube channel through server files to obtain the relevant data. After that, as a third step, the web server returns the page or the channel's home page with the videos that you search in YouTube to your web browser in your home and now you can see the video. However, if the HTTP server fails to find or process the requested files, say for example, if you are searching for a page which is not anymore available, you will receive a response with an error message and there are the most common error message, something which we get like 404 error. And there is another error which is 403 which will appear if there are any permission issues. So every status code has a separate meaning and these errors we get from the web server. On the other hand, if the web server fails to receive a timely response from another server which acts as a proxy or a gateway, we get a 504 error. I believe you understand how does this request and response work and what is the part of the web server in this. So let's now see some of the uses of web servers. So these web servers are used for sending and receiving emails, downloading requests for file transfer protocol files, and building and publishing web pages. So there are many web servers that support server-side scripting, which is used to employ scripts on a web server that customizes the response to the client. And these server-side scripting runs on the server machine and typically has a broad feature set which includes database access. And these server-side scripting process will also use active server pages, hypertext preprocessor which is the PHP and other scripting languages. And this process also allow HTML documents to be created dynamically. So when talking about dynamic, we will see what is the difference between the dynamic versus the static web servers. A web server can be used to serve either static or dynamic content. Static refers to the content being shown as is while dynamic content can be updated and changed. A static web server will consist of a computer and a HTTP software. It is considered static because the server will send hosted files, files to the browser. On the other hand, the dynamic web browsers will consist of a web server and other software such as the application server, a database server, and this is considered dynamic because the application server can be used to update any hosted files before they are sent to a browser. The web server can generate content when it is required from the database. Though this process is more flexible, but it is more complicated. So now, before we end, so let's see what are the top web servers which are in the market? So the first one is Apache HTTP server, which is developed by Apache Software Foundation. It is a free open source web server for Windows, Mac OS, Linux, Unix, and all the other operating systems. And it needs Apache license. And the second and the most commonly used web server is 
Microsoft Internet Information Service which we call as IAS in short and this is developed by Microsoft for Microsoft platforms. It is not open source but it is widely used since Microsoft is widely used across the computer world. And then third one is Nginx which is a popular open source web server for administrators because of its light resource utilization and scalability and it can handle many concurrent session due to its event driven architecture and nginx can also be used as a proxy server and load balancer so these are the most common and frequently used and leading web servers that we have in the market there are many other web servers as well there are a lot of open source and licensed web servers but these are these three are the most commonly used web servers in the market and it is very important to have security practices for the web server since web server are the front facing to the users and there are a lot of security practices that can be set around the web server which makes the web servers and the internet usage in a more safer experience and few examples we have which we follow for security practices which is something like a reverse proxy which is designed to hide an internal server and act as an intermediary for traffic originating an internal server and the second security practice is access restriction through processes such as limiting the web hosts access to infrastructure machines or using secure socket shell which is the SSH and the third practice is keeping the web servers patched and up to date to help ensure the web server is not susceptible to vulnerabilities and the fourth security practice is network monitoring to make sure there is not any or unauthorized activity that has been happening in the web server and using a firewall and SSL as firewalls can monitor HTTP traffic while having a secure socket layer and that can help keep data secure so with that we come to an end and I believe this video would have been very useful to you we will meet in another interesting video in the next session. Until then, it's bye bye from Vasan Chanmugam and Literates Law.